Hi guys, this is Mrs. Lyons. Today for homework we're going to be taking a look at what are these things called seismic waves and we're going to be filling out a graphic organizer. So the first thing that you need to know is that seismic waves are just simply waves of energy that are caused by these earthquakes. So whenever earthquake happens it actually sends seismic waves shooting through the earth that can be sensed all around town in different cities that you might be feeling that earthquake. Now, there are major types of seismic waves. There are two. There's something called surface waves, and there's also something called body waves. And then each of those breaks down into two categories. So for the surface waves, surface waves they travel differently from body waves so surface waves are the types of waves that travel through the surface of the earth so these are the shaking that can be sensed at the surface of the earth so these are the ones that are mostly responsible for all the types of damage and destruction that we see on the surface of our planet. Body waves, however, are a little bit differently. Body waves, they body waves travel differently. They travel through the interior portion of our planet. So you can think of it sort of like traveling across the surface of the basketball for the surface waves and then through the interior of the basketball for the body waves. Now, for the surface waves, there are two major categories. One of them is called love waves and another one is called Rayleigh waves. So love waves are named after a person who first figured out that they were going on. And this is the fastest type of wave. And they move the ground in side to side motion. So if you look at the diagram beneath, you can see kind of these little bricks sliding away from you, these little bricks coming towards you. That is the type of motion predicted by love waves. The second type of surface waves is called Rayleigh waves. These ones also travel through the surface, through the top of the basketball, but they move the ground in a rolling or circular motion so the way that this would feel like to a person is that it would feel like an up and down motion okay so those are the two major types of surface waves love waves back and forth across the top of the earth Rayleigh waves rolling motion so it sort of feels like it might be a wave on the water circling around and around if you look at the picture now we have to talk about body waves these are the ones that shoot through the interior of the earth and travel to different locations so there are two types of body waves and these ones we have to be really really familiar with because these are the ones that we're going to use to pinpoint the location of the earthquake P waves also known as primary waves are the first type of wave to arrive somewhere and these are generally stronger waves and move through the earth by pushing and pulling 
So if you can see some of the bricks are getting compressed, some of the bricks are getting stretched in the diagram below, this is what happens with the earth. It's sort of like if you were to take a set of jello and then try to squish it from side to side with your hands. Secondary waves, just like the name applies, are the second type of wave to arrive. Primary waves are the, the first type. So let's talk about primary waves. Primary waves are the first wave to arrive when you sense an earthquake. Now primary waves um, move through the solid rock of the earth and they push and pull the rocks as they move. So if you look at the diagram beneath, some of the bricks are getting pushed, some of them are getting pulled. So this is typically what the animals in different places pick up on and get really concerned about. Most of us people are not as perceptive. So primary waves are also the weaker earthquake wave. Now secondary waves arrive directly after the primary waves. So they, the second set of shaking to arrive. They are stronger than primary waves. A lot of the times people are going to think, okay, I survived that primary wave that just got here. That wasn't so bad and they carry on with their lives. And there is one thing that they do not know is that there's about to be a second stronger set of shaking coming to your location. So those are the secondary waves that we're going to be picking up. And then the secondary waves, they sort of move through the solid rock by snaking motion. So if you look at this picture, you can see the rock undulating side to side. All right. So those are our seismic waves. So there's four major types. Love waves, Rayleigh waves, which are surface waves. Primary and secondary waves, which are body waves. These two are going to be the ones that we are the most concerned with because they're, they're, they reveal the most information about the planet. Now, when we are studying seismic waves, we're not going to just be going to be relying on accounts made by people. We're actually going to be using a readout of seismic waves, how much shaking happened or didn't happen to tell us what's going on with the planet. So on this diagram, I want you guys to label what's happening. All right, so let's take a look. First thing we should label at the bottom is that this represents time. Our, usually this one is in minutes and seconds. So this is how much time on the clock has passed. And then on the y-axis, you can label right here, is the amplitude. So this is how we read out how strong an earthquake is happening. Please label it right on the left. Now some other things that you might notice. We have some minor shaking, so even if there is no earthquake going on, the little zigzags running up to 17 minutes and 40 seconds are a sign that a little minor shaking, this is just noise, noise term labeled right here. This is noise, so this means that nothing is happening. It might be picking up natural vehicle traffic. It might be picking up people walking on the ground, but the earth is not perfectly quietly still all the time. So this noise is just happening, it's minor, nothing that you would feel as an earthquake. Then we get the first set of waves. So the needle starts to move, the shaking begins. So this right here 
you should label as the P wave arrival time. So the primary wave arrives around 17 minutes, maybe 41 seconds. P wave arrival time. So this is the time during which the primary wave, the first wave to get there, gets there. This whole set of waves that you're seeing, the first bunch, until they kind of start to die down, can be labeled together as primary waves, or P waves for short. So then the shaking dies down, you are going, oh, okay, I survived my earthquake, and then bam, I mean, even stronger shaking begins. So the second set of shaking that reaches much higher than the first is the secondary wave. So you can actually label the secondary wave arrival time to be around 17 minutes, 46 seconds. So this is S wave arrival time. And the shaking continues, 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 all the way until the end of this diagram. So this second, much more severe set of shaking are called secondary waves or S wave. And what we need to know about these two waves from the diagram are these last two terms to place. SP interval, so how much time passes between the primary and the secondary wave. So I can actually look from this peak to that peak, which to me looks like about five seconds. 1741, 1746, so 1746 minus 1741, that's about five seconds, that would be my SP time, so you can label it right here with an arrow. And the second thing I need to know is the amplitude. The amplitude tells me how strong, how terrible the earthquake is. So the amplitude always goes from this sort of neutral line where no shaking is going on to the highest peak. So to me, it looks like the highest peak is here, and I would have to estimate from the graph it would be something like maybe 7 millimeters in magnitude. All right, so we're going to be using this information very, very soon in the lab to figure out how to read these seismograms, they're called, the readouts of seismic waves, to tell us where the earthquake has come from and what type of damage did it cause.